it's another experiment which is unbelievably easy to build and yet has so much bang for the buck. I've almost never had this much fun. I keep saying that a lot, don't I, on different projects, but this one really got me excited. So I have a friend who does maybe the best portable planetarium show in the world. So he travels with the planetarium. And when I saw his show, I thought being the gadget guy that I am, it would be fun if I added a couple of like laser special effects to his planetarium show. So I wanted to have something since he travels all the time that fit in a small space, an indestructible box. And I wanted to make it out of stuff that I just happened to have around the shop so that it was inexpensive to make. And I came up with something I just was so excited. I decided to make a video about for you too. And that is the paint bucket planetarium show. So it's a whole planetarium show and a mini laser show. And you can expand the mini laser show as well that fits in a paint bucket. And the only external piece this actually could go inside, but I'm being super careful, is a little piece of two inch PVC tubing that I went ahead and painted black. So if we open our paint bucket up, we don't even need the lid, that can go. And we reach inside, I have a control panel that I built. So this is the only thing electronically that if you want to make the same type of control panel, you'd need to do a little bit of soldering. I had these switches just around my workbench, but I've got an alternative for you. If you don't want to solder and build uh, the little snazzy control panel, I've got a way that you can do this without having to make anything at all other than to buy a few parts I got at the dollar store. So this is our massive control panel. We have our planetarium, we have our nebula generator, and then we have a laser light show, which I wanted to, he always in his planetarium show, lets the kids know how vast the distances of space are. So I wanted to give him a warp drive. So that's what I call the laser, I call it the warp drive. And all we have to do to activate our planetarium is to lift up inside of our paint box. And this is our laser and planetarium projector head that sits on top. So the control panel goes over there. I'm gonna go ahead and take our PVC tube, which is our standoff here at the bottom of the uh, little wooden circle here where all the components mount is just a little piece of, uh, I believe that's inch and a half uh, uh, square uh, wood and that slots into the PVC tube, which is just a standoff. So in the box also, what I'm working around there, there we go, our planetarium projector. Inside the box, what I'm working around is that there's also a long extension cord, which just pulls out. This is 15 feet long, so you can plug it in just about anywhere you would like to. And once your planetarium is set in place and you have your control panel, you can do the amazing show. I'll show you a couple of quick demos right now from what the different laser parts can do. And we'll come back and discuss exactly what's sitting right here on top. So this is what I used for the planetarium projector itself. Now in his planetarium, he's already got a projector, but I thought this one has a very wide field and would be a nice background type projector. So Sega makes these. You can find them used on eBay for about $60. They usually come from Japan or brand new. There's one that's twice as bright and it's about $250. So that, that was a little rich for my blood right now, but maybe in the future we'll upgrade to the brighter version. These have 60,000 stars and they have rotation features so you can actually rotate the stars. There are discs, which are about $35 each, that will feature individual planets or also show the different markings on the constellations. So you can even expand this once you get it. It's not really a sales pitch for this particular planetarium projector. There are several different ones that look really good, but I just researched the heck out of it. 
I'm happy with this projector. I think as you look at the images here in the video, you'll be really impressed with the star patterns that it generates. 60,000 stars, very amazing. But I will tell you that with the camera, I went and I set the exposure so the stars would be very bright. And my one complaint is, if you don't buy the higher end version of this, it, the stars are about the intensity of a night light. Um, so it's neat, it's really neat to have those on. I think the light bulb in here is three watts, so it's not very powerful. But I definitely, my one complaint with this device would be that I really would have liked the stars to be brighter when you project them because it has to be a very dark environment. So that box can go over there also. And looking at the top, now there are all kinds of these fun little laser projectors uh, that you can find on eBay. You can find them on the different Chinese sites you can order from. Or a lot of times uh, seasonally, like at Halloween, uh, places like Pick and Save have these for like $20 each. So the ones I got, and I'll list all of these below the video in the comments if you want to order the same ones I got. And I was a little picky. I have several years experience trying different ones out. So I do know the ones that make, in my mind, that make the more interesting patterns. But I'm by no means, gosh, there's dozens and dozens of different kinds. And it's only 20 bucks to try out another version of these and see what you like the best. So this is one of my favorite. It projects nebulas and it also has a neat laser driven star pattern. The only thing I didn't like about it for a planetarium is it's a green laser that's in there as far as the stars and green stars. I, you know, I just can't quite get used to green stars. This also has a Bluetooth speaker in it. So what I did was I cut a hole in the platform that it mounts to. I can show you the hole right there and the speaker faces down into the hole. That way, our paint bucket becomes a resonant cavity for the Bluetooth speaker that's built into our little projector here, and we can play sound effects when we're traveling through space, we can have a narration, we can have music, and since this big resonant cavity has a very nice bassy sound. Uh, it really, really enhances the Bluetooth speaker. I thought as an option, you could get one of those deep bass super Bluetooth speakers, and you could actually, there's so much extra room in the bucket, even after everything's in there for storage, you could actually just have a big old giant Bluetooth speaker in there. And I think sound, as you know, for any production is one of the most exciting things, especially if we have a warp drive. Everybody knows warp drives make really cool sounds. Uh, and then on the other side, I have just that laser special effect box. There's a single support here just on the side. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you uh, a quick still shot, a clean still shot with measurements. You do not have to follow my measurements exactly at all. As you can see, the whole concept is super, super simple. Uh, however, I'll give them to you because I know sometimes it saves me when somebody puts the measurements in from buying the wrong part and having to do something twice. Usually I do things three times, but it's, ni it's nice to have a starting point, but definitely do it your own way. This would be a spectacular science fair project. It would be a spectacular night, night light for your room. It would be fantastic for a party. And if you put a little bit of fog into the air, uh, you can see the laser beams. I can show you some slides of what that looks like. And that is also would make a fantastic warp drive. We could do a follow-up video to this because I do have some more sophisticated laser light show components uh, that I can show you how to build that do all sorts of different patterns and cones and shapes. If you want me to put that video together, just again, let me know in the comments. And other than that, it's just a power switch for each of the different projectors and each of uh, the laser components come with a remote control. So these are just, why well, strong Velcro. I bought the 15 pound Velcro at Walmart and I just Velcroed them to a piece of plastic that I cut out and I made a really slick control panel where you can operate all the different things from your control booth or your chair. So I did promise that you don't have to make this more complicated soldering uh, project. And let me show you something else that I think you might dig. And this was something that I came up with for my other laser show. So at the dollar store, you can also find these eBay or Amazon. These are foot switches and they're connected to an extension cord. So I put the extension cord inside of just an ordinary plastic storage box and you can pull these out. Each of these is just the end of an extension cord and attach it to whatever you would like to power. And you can just use these foot switches to turn it off and on. These are also kind of neat because they glow. So if you're working in a dark environment, you can see your switches and you can even operate them with your foot if you would like. And all of your lasers, all of your components when you're traveling, 
can just go in your storage box. So I like that. And the storage box has a single plug and this just goes to a power strip inside that all of your different buttons connect to. So no soldering, no trouble. This could just as easily run as a planetarium projector like this does. I just like the paint bucket. It's cost nothing, virtually nothing, $4. And it's almost indestructible and it's really small. So it's great if you're traveling with your show as well. And it kind of has that, that look to it. The last thing I was gonna show you is this is my usual laser rack that I use for a show when you wanna project it on a big wall and when you have a lot of fog in the room and all that. And it works exactly the same way. I just added a fog machine and you can make this with a piece of PVC pipe and just hang any lasers or any toys that you buy that make the beams from the rack and it simply sits on a stand, photographic stand. Those are maybe $10, again, on eBay, too. So just some really fun ways to set up the special effects. But I'm in love with the planetarium projector. I think you'll get a huge kick out of seeing the different stars, projecting them, talking about them wherever you go. And I hope you'll share your ideas from what might transpire in the show, because I got some ideas, too, and I will show them to you soon. So thanks for checking it out, and good luck with your planetarium projector.